In the final video of my 1R reviews, we're going to look at the 1 inch mod to see whether it lives up to the hype of being the best camera for action type content in early 2020, or if the GoPro Hero 8 Black is better. We'll also look at 30 more pros and cons you should know before you consider buying it. Finally, we'll take a look at what the future looks like for this camera and whether you should upgrade from your current camera or wait for the next Insta360 camera. So here's the 1 inch edition of the 1R and and it comes with the same body, battery, and cage as the other builds of the camera, but this time it has a wide angle Leica lens, which has an f3.2 aperture and equates to roughly a 14 millimeter lens. It's also got a one inch sensor, and I see that as a game changing feature for an action camera. As you probably know by now, the camera is modular, meaning you have to assemble it brick by brick, almost like you're a kid putting a piece of Lego together. You attach the body piece to the lens piece, and then the battery goes underneath. However, with the one inch you also need to unscrew the lens in order to get it into the cage. So that takes a bit of extra time. Here I timed myself and it took about 20 seconds to assemble everything from scratch. Depending on how you intend on using it, you may only ever keep it assembled as one particular build of the camera. So if that's the case, you don't even need to worry about this. If you do plan on using it as a 360 camera and using the 4K module as well, this is definitely something you need to factor in. It's gonna take time to change the lenses. And when traveling, I found it a bit frustrating having to do this over over and over. However, I guess it's kind of like a DSLR where you change lenses and that's about the time it would take anyway. So in exchange for the flexibility of having lots of uses for the camera, you need to sacrifice a bit of time to change between the various builds. Also, it's never going to be easy changing SD cards. This latch is the bane of my uh, stupid thing. On the plus side, it does accept really big SD cards. Here I'm using the SanDisk Extreme Pro 400 gigabyte SD card and it works great. You can can fit well over 10 hours of 5.3K video on it, and I strongly suggest using a card like this if you plan on buying the 1R. I've noticed the sharpness is really good, and 5.3K does genuinely look better than 4K, even when exported in a 4K video. We know already the stabilization is good for the 360 build, but with the one inch build, I was honestly surprised. It's actually doing a very decent job here, given I'm not taking any care whatsoever. I'm just running like a maniac who forgot to take his meds. Here I flipped the camera upside down and did the same thing and this shot is looking stable. The camera has a good selection of frame rate options. It does 5.3K at 30 frames a second, 4K at 30 and 60 frames a second, 3K at 30 and 60 frames a second, and HD at 30, 60 and 120 frames a second with the one inch mod. Here I tested out the slow motion 120 FPS at HD and it's looking good. That snow went down my back by the way and it burned. Ouch. Okay, well, I can't test this in the water because there ain't no water in sight. It's all ice, but I've got a bottle of water. Next best thing, right? Let's do it. It survived, yes. Here's a hyperlapse I shot at 5.3K resolution and it's kind of bumpy. I know for sure if I was shooting with the 360 build of this camera, it would be silky smooth. So while I guess it's good to have the hyperlapse option, it's always going to be better when shot in 360 due to the far superior stabilization you can get when shooting 360 video. There's my camera, it's covered in snow. Did it survive? Yeah, looks good to me. Although there does seem to be snow right in there. <laughs> I tried blowing it out and I can't get it. I just worried that if I was to unscrew this, maybe the snow or potentially water could get underneath the lens. So while I can't verify it, I suspect there could be some kind of issue with people unscrewing the lens, getting dirt and water and snow underneath the big bulbous lens bit. Now you're probably wondering, how long can you record 5.3K video continuously without the camera overheating? Well, here I tested just that. The temperature was 21 degrees Celsius when I recorded this and the camera recorded for 28 minutes and 
and 47 seconds before I got a message that the camera was getting hot and it had to stop recording. That's pretty decent and this is something that can be improved with future firmware updates. Also you're going to get way longer recording times when shooting with the 4K module and the 360 module. You can plug the 1R into external power, it's got a USB-C connector so hypothetically you could shoot all day long connected to an external battery as long as you button on and off at least every 10 minutes. Also I've had a few questions about how the design holds together because the camera's modular. A few people have been worried about whether it's going to come apart, whether it, the design is flimsy. Well I've got to say once you assemble all of the pieces you don't even notice that it's a modular camera. It feels exactly like a GoPro in your hand and for my two months using it so far I've not had a single issue with the connectivity of the parts. I found the inbuilt sound recording to be a bit unreliable. It's still early days and I'm noticing strong amounts of wind and handling noises of the actual camera while I'm trying to speak. And yes, I do realize I'm wearing silly floppy dog ears, but they're warm and it's really cold in Canada right now. I find it really impressive how much this camera can do. You can use it for a hundred different things. So depending on the type of content you create, you can use it just for that. You can build it just as a 360 camera, just as a 4K camera, or just as a 5.3K action camera. They have offered a workaround if you don't like the inbuilt sound, and that involves using an external sound recording device, or an on-camera shotgun mic that you can mount to the top of the camera. I've also noticed a significant focus issue with the 1R 1 inch edition, where basically anything at close range within two feet is going to be slightly soft. When I zoom into the background, those trees are looking sharp, but my face is soft, and this is about standing standard vlog distance from the camera. I don't think this is something they'll be able to fix with firmware, so I do consider this to be a genuine flaw of the 1 inch edition. It's definitely not going to be the right build of the 1R to buy if you want to shoot anything close up. It would be better buying the 4K or even the 360 build because those two have no issue getting close range objects in focus. Now here's one for you. Do we actually need 5.3K? Well, my first answer is no. 4K is the standard in 2020. However, I've been thinking about it and where I think 5.3k will be a genuine value add to content creators is not to end up with a 5.3k video but to end up as a 4K video just with different fields of view. Here I'm in Insta360 Studio and I shot this in 5.3K, but it doesn't mean I have to export it at that resolution. So I've got ultra wide, wide, linear, and narrow. And when you look at the difference between ultra wide and narrow, that's pretty significant. So the 5.3K is giving me that extra level of flexibility to have my shot ultra wide or a little bit narrower and I'm not losing the 4K resolution with either one. Whereas if you started with this frame at 4K, and then punched in, it would be closer to about 3.5K. So you're going to get noticeably sharper video quality no matter which field of view you choose. You know how 360 video gives you the flexibility to choose your angle later. Yeah, it's a similar principle. Now I've been getting countless requests to compare the one inch 1R with the GoPro Hero 8. So I went out and bought myself a GoPro and here's what I got. These deer were kind enough to be my subjects and with both cameras, I filmed them at their maximum resolution possible, which is 5.3K with the 1R and 4K with the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Here they are without color correction and here they are with. If you're watching this in full screen, you'll see there's a big difference between the two. The 1R looks better in most ways. The colors look better and more vibrant. The contrast and sharpness is significantly better than the GoPro. All of the trees in the distance look much sharper. The deer look sharper and the shadows and highlights have much better definition. I'm also noticing with the GoPro, there's visible visible noise in the shadow areas of the trees. And that doesn't look super good given it was only about 4.30 p.m. when I filmed this. Also, if I zoom into the branches up the top, I'm seeing more color imperfections and sharpness issues with the GoPro that I'm not seeing with the Insta360 camera. You could say the colors look nicer with the GoPro and you also could say the same about the 1R. It's not enough of a difference to say one is significantly better than the other. What I can say though is that the 1R one inch blows the GoPro Hero 8 Black out of the water in this type of shooting situation where the cameras are locked off on a tripod and the lighting is relatively even. Here I am running with the two and the difference isn't as obvious now. I think they're both doing a really good job. With its stabilization combined with 60 frames a second, the Hero 8 is actually pretty impressive. Whereas at 30 frames a second at 5.3K, I'm seeing a bit of motion blur with the 1R. GoPro as a company,
company who've been around way longer than Insta360, so you can tell they've got things like this a bit more down pat. However, Insta have a tendency of copying people's homework, so expect to see vastly improved stabilization from the 1R coming soon. Okay, this is the second test, but this time I've switched the 1R into 4K60 mode, so they're both recording at the same resolution and same frame rate. I found the 1R to be exceptionally good in low light. Most other action cameras would barely even see this scene, yet it's capturing it relatively clearly. Yes, there is noise, but not that much. And yeah, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm making peace with the bread. We've got a tumultuous relationship, but I thought I'd be the bigger person and make peace. Anyway, I digress. Due to the one inch sensor, anytime you go out shooting at night, you're going to get the best result you possibly can from a point and shoot camera. Capturing a very low light scene with both cameras, and I'm not Noticing a night and day difference. Pun intended. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, again, if you're in full screen, it's going to be really obvious what the difference is. You don't have to squint much. You can probably see it if you're not in full screen as well. Basically, there's a high amount of noise with the GoPro Hero 8, and I can barely see any with the 1 inch 1R. That looks damn good on the left. It could be sharper, but it's good enough. When I take it handheld, again, I'm seeing noticeable motion blur. If you look at the lamps on either side, it's moving left and right a lot more with the 1R. I do know for a fact that they're working on a nice time setting for video so the shutter speed isn't as slow and therefore it won't produce this kind of issue. It's not ready yet but it should be soon. There's lots more I could talk about when it comes to comparing these two cameras. I only just scratched the surface here but I am going to give it to the 1R for the better sharpness, better low light, bigger sensor and also having the ability to transform into another kind of camera in a 360 camera with its other build. But hey that's just my opinion. If you think differently let me know in the comments. I do quickly want to address the photo modes. The 1R has so many different modes you can shoot in both with the one inch build the 4k build and the 360 build that you can properly expose basically any scene that comes your way i shot some photo samples with the one inch build and i can say they look good i shot in raw i shot in hdr i shot in night mode which is a really good mode for the 360 build as well and while firstly i wouldn't buy a camera like this if my focus was strictly photography when i took these samples i was pretty impressed with the amount of flexibility i had later on in editing to edit these raw files and recover the highlights and the shadows quite significantly. This is another advantage of having that one inch sensor because it captures more overall information in the image, meaning if you mess up your shot to begin with, you can recover it later. Now really quickly, I wanna show you what the workflow looks like. Once you've shot your photos and videos, you can either import directly to your phone through the 1R app, or you can insert the micro SD card into your computer and process the footage in Insta360 Studio, which is Insta360's free desktop program that is also a really good program for reframing 360 video in. The mobile workflow is much faster and what's great about it is you don't have to download all of your footage before you start editing it. You can literally edit before you download and then you can export directly from the SD card of the camera to the camera roll of your phone without having to duplicate the files which would usually fill up your phone storage pretty fast. That's a great way to edit. It's really fast and something I'm extremely happy about is the app now allows you to export 4K video directly to your camera roll. If you choose the desktop workflow, you're going to get slightly higher resolution. However, it will also take longer to stitch and process your footage. Right now, you can't get MOV files or MP4 files. You need to put the INSV files through Insta360 Studio to eventually get to a 4K or 5.3K MP4 file. Rumor has it they will be changing this at least with footage shot with the one inch mod. Also, they do have a Premiere plugin to edit the INSV files directly in Premiere without processing them first. The file sizes of 5.3K video are pretty reasonable. Each minute of footage equates to about a gigabyte. They do give you a good amount of options when you're exporting to do with the resolution, the bit rate, using color plus, which is their inbuilt LUT. However, I found when you make the quality super high and the bit rate super high, the export times can turn into a ridiculous amount of time, like a 
day for 20 minutes of footage. So just be careful not to put the bitrate up too high past, let's say 150 megabits a second, because it's just not necessary anyway. 100 to 150 megabytes a second is a really high amount and will lead to really good image quality. Something else to note is that a lot of the issues I've pointed out in this video are likely to be fixed. Insta360 are a company who listen to their users. And if someone says a feature is really bad, they'll most likely see the post in their Facebook group and go off and change it. I'm pretty sure they follow my YouTube channel as well. So when I say something sucks, they're like, Hey, Mr. Engineer, Mr. Ben says our camera sucks. Fix it. Oh, I am very sorry, Mr. CEO. I will fix it right away. You better, or I will show you my pimp hand once again. So I do expect they'll be watching this video as well. A lot of you already own the Insta360 One X and are wondering whether you should upgrade to the One R. Well, I'd say it's not an obvious upgrade because the specs are just too similar, the image quality is too similar, and I honestly don't see it as a worthwhile upgrade unless there's one thing you think is particularly good and helpful for your situation. For example, you want a camera that's waterproof straight out of the box, you've got that with the One R. If you just wanna shoot fun social media type content, then don't upgrade from the One X wait for their next camera. If you currently own a 360 camera that is noticeably inferior to the One R, then I'd say you absolutely should consider upgrading to it because it's like the inspector gadget of 360 cameras. It's got a thousand uses and you can make so many different kinds of amazing content with it. I've got four other videos on my channel already that cover the ins and outs of the One R and the various builds, so be sure to check them out. If you are considering buying the One R and you're not sure which edition you should get, I'd say definitely the 3 360 edition and the one inch edition is definitely worthwhile. With a 4K build, I just don't see when you'd really need that unless you want a 4K underwater camera and you don't want the one inch for whatever reason, maybe it's budget, I don't know. But really it depends on the type of content you plan on making. If you're a 360 shooter and you don't shoot flat action type content, then just get the 360 version. If you're big on action content and want a versatile camera to get you hundreds of different camera angles in the same device, then go for the one inch and the 360 builds. I do also want to add that if you're into 360 photography, then you should probably consider another camera. All of the best features with the One R focus around video and the low photo resolution is just the icing on the cake. It shoots photos good, but not great. Only consider the One R if video is your primary focus and photo is secondary. One thing that I'm pretty sure about is that there will be more mods of the One R. They'll come up with another cool way of using it. Maybe it's like strapping it to a horse and you put it where the horse is. I I don't know. But since they've made the camera modular, it gives them flexibility to turn it into another kind of camera. They could always update it with a better lens or a better battery or a better screen. There are so many things they can do with this camera and most likely will. And yes, I better patent the Horse 360 camera idea because I'm pretty sure they're gonna steal it. The final thing you should know, and this is just pure speculation, is will there be a One X2? Well, this kind of is a One X2 and it's kind of not. It's not the camera we were all expecting expecting, it's pretty different. Just like when the Insta360 Evo came out, we thought that was going to be the One X2. So they've released three cameras after the One X that all haven't been the Insta360 One X2. So are they still going to make this mythical camera? Well, yeah, probably. I've got no idea when, but I'd say there's a good chance they're already working on their next camera and we'll see it around the middle to the end of the year. But again, who knows what it will be? It could be the Horse 360 camera. And then if you decided to wait because you thought it was going to be the One X2, too, you might be a bit disappointed that the camera nays at you instead of having really high resolution. So anyway, this is just pure speculation. Take it for what you will. I'll put a link to the 1R 1 inch edition in the description, as well as the various things you've seen me use in this video. I'm kind of curious, what do you think of the 1R as a whole? Is having a modular camera a good idea, or is it better to have a camera with less uses, but better at those few things? Personally, I think there are pros and cons in each, and what Insta have done here is just given us something different. I'll probably post a few more more videos featuring the One R in the not too distant future, as well as the other cool cameras of 2020. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be the first to see them. And that's it. Bye.